Oh, Polynesian Cultural Center. They're going to a luau at Polynesian Cultural Center on the North Shore. And uh, yeah, they're going to live it up a little bit in addition to getting some really high quality experience against the fourth ranked team in the country. Hawaii, of course, one and one after splitting the two matches last week against Loyola Chicago. And it is the Lions breaking the ice. They score the first point thanks to a net violation against Hawaii. The Hawaiian Financial FC is starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And the biggest change for Hawaii, Keone Thim getting the start in place of Chaz Galloway, who we are told is likely not to play tonight and possibly not on Friday either as Spiros Hakas hammers that one down. Spiros Hakas just been on another level again, C-Mac. Uh, already, I think, staking claim to being a National Player of the Year candidate, hitting almost five kills per <laughs> set. Unbelievable. You know what? He's known as an outside left hitter, left side hitter, and back real quick. But boys, he's been good from the right side. And he's scrambling a little bit. And then the two hand save by Eliu Choi. And here comes Hawkins. Hanging and banging. Spiros Hawkins, 4.75 kills per set. This tops on the team. He's hitting 391. Also has 11 digs and five blocks. In the five-set loss to Loyola, he had 22 kills, hit 500. Hawaii's offense and their efficiency numbers wasn't really the problem that night. Not at all. That was, that was a little like, bit more of the problem. <laughs> that was the problem, you're right. Hawkins got a little sign from the antes in the corner. Sign says, Grease Lightning. Yeah, I like it. That was a good one. Here's Greg Bode, a 6'6 freshman from Delafield, Wisconsin. One of a whole bunch of underclassmen on this Emmanuel roster. As Guilherme Boss gets into the book with the kill. Now, you weren't here, uh, C-Mac, but I know you observed things last week. Uh, I want to get your thoughts here in a moment on uh, Tred Rosenthal. Uh, but James Friddle, he is the head coach in his sixth year of the Emmanuel Lions. And uh, let's just say his style is unique as the overpass is forced. Back row set, and that one smacked by Aiden Feeney, but they're going to say that he crossed the line, so back row violation. And there's a look at the full fit of James Friddle. Now, he's kind of known for this. He, uh, he wears uh, what can be sometimes described as a uh, fairly uh, out there and crazy design patterns on his clothes. And he's doing this not just because he's in Hawaii. He wears it everywhere. It's kind of his thing, yeah. Oh, and that one drops on the Emmanuel side of the net. Yeah, you got to love James Friddle. I mean, he's a great guy to talk to as you take a look at uh, his counterpart tonight, Charlie Wade, in his 15th year on the top of the program. 270 career wins as Hawaii head coach. Second only to the great Mike Wilton. Sonny Finn's grandfather. All right, so free chance here for Hawaii. Rosenthal goes middle, Kurt Neusterer. And a net violation goes against the Lions, so Hawaii gets the point. Your thoughts on Tred Rosenthal, the uh, true freshman, 17 years of age, uh, who last week made his collegiate debut? Well, he is, he is the real deal. I couldn't wait to watch him play his first NCAA game. Unfortunately, I had to watch it at home as I lost my voice last week. And I barely have it this week. But anyway, <laughs> I love Tread. I love he He sets all the great sets. I thought he had a few accuracy problems last week. And I thought he didn't set the middle enough on night number one. Night number two, he started to feel more comfortable and set the middle. Um, and I think he runs great offense. Look, look at the numbers. What, they hit 500 for the weekend, I think? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, pretty darn good for sure, especially on that second night. And there he sets up Keone Thim. And Thim, who had three kills last week, able to uh, get in the book there. Seven serving two here in set number one. G. Voss with the serve. Emmanuel scrambling a little bit from that D position. The swing by Arturo Diaz Dubé will be dug up. And then Thim climbs the ladder, but a great dig by the libero, Nicholas Eichenberger. Here's Thim a second time, dug up by Eichenberger again. Was seventh in the nation last year in digs per set. You saw a couple of moments as to why he was able to accumulate those numbers, but uh, Keone Thim wasn't going to be denied after a couple of sets came his way. You see Keone Thim, he's got a confused look on his face like, how did that guy pick it up? I just drilled it. Eichenberger, all around player. 
he was, again, their top digger. Got starts at libero as well as outside hitter, as well as setter in different spots last year. And that one is put down by Aiden Feeney. 6'5", sophomore. He was relegated to only four sets played last year due to injury. And so head coach James Friedel happy to get him back. A couple of guys who were red shirts a year ago. I've actually been warm up. I like the Feeney, the way he played. Very aggressive. Cutting Todd with the swing there. It'll be returned, free ball style. Backside, here's Todd again. And he hits it long. Went over the block and out, no touch. And the point to the Lions. It's a long time since his last error, isn't it? I think he was errorless on night number two. He absolutely was. Wrong. He had 12 kills, no errors, hit 545 that second night against Loyola. So he is human. Yeah. Here's Noah Langelier, 5'11", sophomore, from Mont Bellevue, Texas. Alakai Todd, uh, that time, tried to slice it thin and hit it into the twine. That's a tough shot to try, I'll tell you. He saw the block up, probably a decent choice, but he just bit off more than he could chew right there. So that's three straight points here for Emmanuel. Out of Conference Carolinas, as that serve goes long by Langelier. Langelier was a starting outside hitter last season and then transitioned to being their starting setter this fall. That's really hard to do. That's really hard. Nine serving five, it's Todd. Backside set. And good swing there by Eli Zadonik. Another guy who redshirted last year, but coach very happy to have him back in the lineup. But the roof was up there for Hawaii, led by Kurt Neusterer. He's another fun guy to watch. I, I enjoyed watching Neusterer play last week. Really hustles on the block to get to the outside and close it. Team leader in blocks through two matches. Also hitting 563 this young season. Zadonic roll shot blocked by Rosenthal. Tread listed at 6'8. We mentioned Charlie Wade seems to think he might be closer to 6'9, maybe even pushing above that. Yeah. And he was able to get one of those huge frying pan hands on the ball here. Not many freshmen will have the volleyball IQ to get over there and put up a three man block on that left side. Serve tickled the tape. This is Diaz Dubé. The avoidance swing, and he missed the antenna wide. And so, 12 serving five here. And you see Eichenberger, one of the team captains, kind of bringing the crew together, saying, hey, look, let, let's not let this thing get away from us too quickly. James Friddle telling us that his goal in coming into this series, they wanted to be competitive in every set. But Alakai Todd deals an ace out of the deck. And the lead is now eight here for Hawaii after scoring five straight. And we're going to get a timeout from the Lions. History, you could say, between these two programs. Just one previous match. It was won by Hawaii in this building back in 2020. And the Rainbow Warriors winning by way of a sweep. But uh, James Riddle, there you see uh, in the screen, he was saying that there is maybe one player on the roster who was, you know, is veteran enough to have been on that trip. Otherwise, it's pretty much the first ever trip out to the islands for almost this entire team. And in that match, Charlie Wade played 20 guys. We'll see if he does that tonight. Hawaii sitting in a good position here in this first set of 14 to five. They have scored six straight points. Side set, the block was up, but Diaz Dube was able to tool it. 6'5 freshman from Miami, Florida. Actually got his uh, college days started at FIU, Florida International, but uh, just as a student, not a student athlete. And it wasn't until he joined Emmanuel in the fall uh, that he officially became a student athlete volleyball player. Good swing that time by Neuster. Going to be chased down there. Free ball coming over the net. 
First touch is Hawkes. Rosenthal goes back to Neuster. Dug up over the net. Rosenthal the swing. Oh, a lot of tread on that sequence. <laughs> and Hawaii gets the 15 first. To a very predictable set and a very predictable block, making it really tough to have an offense. I have a rotation violation on the Emmanuel side, and that sort of bails Keone Thim out because he had served it into the net. You talk about the serves. That was a bugaboo for Hawaii through that five-setter on night two against Loyola last week. They had only served five out of play in the first night as Keone Thim was locked in on that occasion. That was a bullseye and an ace. And Hawaii already with three service aces as a squad. But Hawaii went from five service errors on night one, night two, they had over 25. Notice we have no radar gun, but that was about 70 miles an hour right there. <laughs> That's probably a good estimate. And that was some hard heat as well from Eli Zadonik, the six foot senior from Greenville, South Carolina. So, not too far away from Franklin Springs, Georgia. He is referred to by James Friedel as a bit of a homegrown talent, at least essentially. Uh, and like so many of these Emmanuel players, grew up playing on grass or outdoor volleyball. Not a lot of organized boys volleyball in the areas that some of these players have been recruited from when you're in the southern region of the country. And so they have to really seek out opportunities to just play and learn the game. And then the other part of that equation is very few states have high school boys volleyball have to rely on clubs or, as you say, the grass, the outdoor, the beach. Well, that's set off the mark, and it hits the antenna. And so that's going to be a point for Hawaii. Oh, I think they're going to give the point to... It is Kurt Neusterer to serve. Born in Germany, 2021 graduate of Columbus North High School in Indiana, also lettered in soccer and swimming. And a good serve. But a good pass as well. Middle set goes to Greg Botis in a little wrist away action. The true freshman out of Catholic Memorial High School gets really, it down. That was a really good pass from Zidonic, was it? I think and right on the money. A lot of good set in the middle there to Botis. So now Arturo Diaz Dubé will serve. Sliding pass there by Thim. That was nifty. Here comes Todd. And he caught it a little fat. It goes long. Has it quite found the range tonight after being almost flawless on night two against Little of Chicago? Who, well, by the way, went on the road and lost twice in a row to Stanford, from Hawaii will play, I believe, in the, the February 7th and 8th, somewhere right around there. Yeah, it was a heck of a turnaround uh, for Loyola Chicago. They played Hawaii Wednesday and Friday and then played Stanford back-to-back -back nights Sunday and Monday yeah. and actually pushed Stanford to five in that rematch on Monday. As Rosenthal gets in on the ace party. I'm so amazed. He's 17 years old. He's playing in front of the biggest crowds he's ever played in front of. Number one setter in the junior national team. Still, I mean, still hasn't graduated from high school, literally. Or has graduated, but it's, it's like, he is so mature. Every part of his game. Big West Conference freshman of the week. Yeah, actually was able to reclassify and graduate a year early. Uh, hence the reason why he's here at the age of 17. Won't turn 18 until this summer. And uh, looking every bit, the, there's Austin Buchanan, one of the reserve setters. Uh, he is not available here this evening. Uh, was exhibiting concussion symptoms uh, after getting hit with a volleyball uh, during service warm-ups prior to the second match against Loyola last week. And so that made it a little bit difficult here in the practice gym gearing up for this series for Hawaii because Tred Rosenthal, really the only now setter uh, who is active on the roster. Back row set thin. What a dig again by Eichenberger. And then the solo stop. Alakai says Ahome. 
Wow, that was one nice move by Alakai, dropping his hands into the angle and just putting it back faster than it came over. So you combine the Austin Buchanan situation with Kevin Calling, who is out with an ankle injury after there was an incident during service warm-ups the first night. Those uh, pre-game warm-ups getting a little hazardous there on the Hawaii side as that swing misses by Aiden Feeney, and Hawaii has Aloha Ball. And so, of course, the joke tonight, there's a look at Kevin Calling, but the joke tonight, Austin Buchanan wearing the sunglasses because of those uh, concussion-like symptoms. Uh, either that or he's wearing sunglasses because of the pants that James Friddle's wearing. <laughs> oh, poor Coach Friddle. And so into the net there by Rosenthal. No, we kid, but uh, we love it, and, and James Friddle uh, has just been such a joy to talk to. Yeah. In both instances when Emmanuel has come down. But, uh, yeah, I think getting back to the Hawaii setter situation, the, the challenge remains. A little bit more pressure now on Tred Rosenthal. There's no relief pitcher to turn to, so to speak. As G Boss gets it home, and Hawaii brings set one home. 25 to 10. Rainbow Warriors hit 263 in set one. Emmanuel in the negatives. Set two. When we to get 13 sets. Tonight already, the middles have been set 33% of the time. You want to look at the 25% number as a good number to have. So he is approaching that stat. Well, he made his college debut last week, did Rosenthal. Louis Sakamoko, 6'5 freshman from Paris, France, who joined the team at the end of semester. Uh, he has only been with this squad for uh, a matter of weeks. Uh, he is making his debut, did not play in that series against Loyola last week. Uh, but this guy, if you have been able to get any kind of uh, glimpses of him in the practice gym or otherwise, uh, he can bring it. Wasn't he recommended by Colton Cowell? Yeah, they played the together, there? actually, on the same team over there uh, in France. And so, yeah, Colton actually helped to facilitate some of the discourse uh, that would eventually lead to uh, Louis Sakonoko coming to Hawaii. Pretty uh, nice recruiting job by Colton Cowell. Until he gets up, he, he flies. And warm up, he just skies. So he passes here. And one off the mark. And it's an ace. So give credit to Andrew Michael, the 6'5 frosh from Melbourne, Australia, who just did a uh, double python flex there, Hulk Hogan-like style to the crowd after that ace uh, for seeing identifying the new guy in the rotation he serves right at him next serve though goes wide and Hawaii gets the point Andrew Michael from, from Australia he was he, coach Friddle said that he does have uh, one of their best serves and uh, he has the, the, the ignominious uh, this reputation that it's always winter for him. <laughs> That's right. As Hoppus climbs the ladder and hammers one down, Hawaii jumps in front. Yeah, Andrew Michael is from Australia. Because down there in Australia during the off season, it is winter time, right? When it's our summertime, it's winter down there. And so that's when he goes home, it's winter. And then when he's over there in Georgia, which, uh, there, I don't think in that area uh, of the country in Franklin Springs, the winters are too harsh, but still, uh, it's winter for him pretty much wherever he goes. <laughs> pretty funny, huh? Was recruited via Zoom and WhatsApp, according to head coach James Friddle. And just kind of look like he's having a good time. Well, we know one person that will not be subbed out tonight. Ted Rosenthal. Yeah, that's unlikely. Here's Lucas Nieves, 6'1 freshman from Kissimmee, Florida. Southpaw serves it into the twine. So five service errors now for Emmanuel compared to three for Hawaii. Aspiros Hakas, who continues to climb the all-time aces list at Hawaii. Entered the match six aces from the top ten. Back row set. That's Zadonic. It'll be returned. Hakas with the set. Here's Sakanoko. 
two-hand punch save Eichenberger. And the standing jump there by Feeney is blocked back. Hawkes again having to take on the setting role. Sakamoto is denied access. Greg Botis in the middle of it all. Well, I tell you, Sakamoto took a rip at this. Three blockers up. Not many places to go. He tried to go to high hands, but the hands got up there pretty good. Sakonoko described as a competitor in the gym. We'll see if he gets another one here. No, they go backside. This is Alakut and Todd dug up by Feeney. Outside Zadonic. Sakonoko with the first touch. Hakas has to chase it down and then two handed over. Outside Zadonic again. Are we going to have a net violation? Or center line violation will be the call against Noah Langelier. Let's see if we can see this here. He lands, yeah, watch his right foot, yeah. He lands near Voss when he get it. If he wasn't near Voss, they wouldn't call it. If there's another player there and there's danger, endangerment of an injury, then uh, they, they'll call that. So by Voss into the twine. So we're tied at four here in the second. Lions serve a great bonus. And here is Botis. Set from Tread Rosenthal again. He holds his hands high. Remember, he's 6'8, he's 6'9. Six, six, he's holding his hands high. Set to the guy that's 6'8. So the ball is being contacted at a very high point. D set. As Nieves off the block. Punched in the air by Hawkins. That quick middle to Neuster at that time was a little bit low. He just got through bragging that he set the ball nice and high. <laughs> and then he, then he sets, sets his own. Neuster is always shot. Here's the short arm it. Oh, well, the <laughs> broadcaster's jinx. <laughs> Two-hand pass there, Sakonoko. Dizek goes to Todd, and he's roofed. And that time it was Eli Zadonik getting most of that one, and all of a sudden the Emmanuel block has come alive here in the second set. The Lions starting to roar. Their bench erupted after this as well. What a nice little... Hand move there by Zadonic. That serve goes out of bounds. And so trading blows here in this second frame. We're tied for the sixth time. And Louis Sakonoko will serve, member of France's U-22 national team, which qualified for the European Championship. And has been in the national program in France for several years, and that was some thunder. Bumped over the net, and Rosenthal finishes the deal. How about that serve, Cadell Leahy? Oh, my goodness. We have another, we have another Keone Thim on the team. Again, Chaz Galloway uh, likely not playing tonight. And so Sakonoko and Thim, uh, they're going to be the two top candidates to fill the role of that second outside hitter position. My goodness. I mean, get your helmet on he when he's behind the service yeah. line. He just brings it, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, how much was he waiting to unleash yeah. in his debut? Didn't play last week. He hasn't been on campus that long, but you know he's uh, in front of this crowd and this environment. You know he was just raring to go. I think Colton Cal had a lot to do with him being here. You tell him what a great environment is here. Neuster, that one floated, but he hit it wide, and he quickly taps his own chest, say, hey, that was on me. He hovered above the tape for a hot second there. You know, it's nice to have a depth in the outside hitting position, because those guys hit more balls than anybody on the team. So to have some, some subs that can go in and give guys a break once in a while makes a big difference. Even give a guy a weekend off. 
This guy doesn't ever appear to take any time off. Spiros Hakas. And it just seems like he's even more explosive here to start this season than in previous years. He does. He he's really seems fired up. He's, his final year, he wants to make the most of it. He'd like to win a national championship, I heard. Six four senior from Nashmirni, Greece, Spiros Hakas. High ball bump set. And Feeney went wide of the antenna. And so Hawaii gets the point. From here, it looked like a really good <laughs> shot, didn't it? Yeah. Nice little line shot. Seemed to catch Todd off guard, but there was a reason for that, apparently. So his volleyball tattoo on his arm. Where have we got that today? <laughs> Celebrating being Hawaii. So inching along here in this second frame. Passed by Eichenberger. Here's Feeney. And that one is in. And some of these Emmanuel celebrations, you gotta love them. I mean, like, yeah. it is just the height of Elan and enthusiasm right now on the line side. Now, Eichenberger, you know, he's he's put up some good passes and he leaves everybody on the floor in digging. I think he's got four, like twice as many as the next player. He's really playing well. Well, that one a little tight to the net. Hawkins a second crack at it, and he kind of paint brushed it, and then it comes down into the Terraflex somewhat awkwardly. And there may have been a wet spot there that he slipped on. He appears to be okay. But it is Emmanuel jumping back in front. Two-hand pass there. Choi behind the head, Seckles to Voss. I'm going to call it the Dome Ace. There's got to be a name for it. Big kill? Uh, cover kill? There's a lot of things you could call that shot right there. Well, you see him pregame oftentimes with a collection of some of his teammates, and they'll kick and head the ball around, almost yes. like hacky sack style. Yes, yes. Uh, and I wonder if there's just something that... Paid off. He's into that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Meanwhile, the serve... Just like you drew it up, right? Tread hits the tape and then curls over for an ace. The team leader in aces coming into the match. Rosenthal now has two, and Hawaii Leak Frogs ahead. I had six coming into tonight. Nevis times it off the block, saved by Choi. Outside, Hawk is up the ladder, and down the shoot it goes. Three straight points for the Bulls. I'm not sure I've ever seen Hawks play with this much energy, determination. And physically, he looks really fit. Oh, nice set. That's Feeney going off the block and down. And so, yeah, hit this Eichenberger, the 5'11 senior from Lee's Summit, Missouri. You mentioned his all-around talent, and you could see it. He was a part-time starter, at least last year, at the setter position. He put that thing on a line. He did. That was a tough set. <laughs> a, how about that for a celebration? It was a new celebration. We haven't seen it yet. They're it's the thigh slap. Hey, they've been working on it in the offseason. This is their season opener. They're revealing all of these moves here to the world as Hawkins got blocked. <laughs> And so Emmanuel gets the point. And we are tied again here at 12. What do you make of what we're seeing here in set two, C-Man? Well, it's, it's exactly, I'll tell you, how Riddle would like it to be. He said, we want to be at least competitive and feel like we have a chance to, to win a game or two. He says, uh, it's pretty clear it's going to be tough to beat the number four team in the country, but and they're much bigger than we are and more seasoned, but we just want to compete. So I'm happy for Riddle that he's happy about that. He's got to be happy with this competition right now. Yeah, preseason pick to finish eighth in Conference Carolinas, but he was telling us, he goes, I, I think we're going to surprise some people here this year. We're young. We have a lot of new faces in new places. He says, but I think we're going to be better than what people are giving us credit for, at least in terms of the expectations going in. I'll tell you, Hawaii is helping Emmanuel's cause by missing a bunch of serves in this particular set.
play with six service errors so far. Six, probably five of them in this set. Yeah, six errors to five aces. Rare shot by Sakanoko is bumped up. The swing here by Langelier blocked, but a net violation is going to give the point to the Lions, and they take the lead. The crowd seems to have been silenced a bit here in the second set, and maybe sitting a bit stunned that the score is as it is right now. Sakamoto powers it off the hands and out, and we're tied, and that raises the volume level just a tad. He's got a big time swing, big time jump, great volleyball IQ. He's played at the national team level. What an addition for the Rainbow Warriors, I'm telling you. I know, late in the game, too. Yeah. Zadonic, that was a confident effort. And Emmanuel gets the 15 first in the second. And look at the body language. The Lions are indeed roaring, C-Mac. They recorded only five service errors to six aces. So uh, it was a completely different serving performance by Hawaii to the other extreme. And an overpass on the serve out of the timeout gives Zadonic the tee up. And now Emmanuel leads by two. This is a second set that has seen 13 ties and six lead changes. Fresh off of a set one where Hawaii won by 15. Hawaii's offense gone. Hitting 056, making six errors, selling seven kills. Meantime, Emmanuel going the other direction. Four kills, hitting 273, siding out at a better percentage than Hawaii. My guess though is that Hawaii's offense will wake up. 15 serving 16, got to get the serves in. Back row, it's Feeney, and Feeney gets it past Spiros Hakas. So Aiden Feeney now with five kills. He's hitting triple zeros at the moment. Like I said earlier, he's the guy who watched in warm-up that really looked sharp. He was really aggressive with his swings. He hit line and cross court. He had some really mixed, nice mixture of shots. D said it's Todd dug up by Feeney, doing a little bit of everything right now. Oh, the readjustment on the approach by Nieves. Leaping save, Joy. Here's Hakas. He repelled down from the rafters. What springs he's got here. What he ends up. There's Choi with the dig. My ball might have been out. Hawkins ending up right there at the center line. Barely keeps from going under. So Sakamoto now back to serve. Let's see if he tries to ramp up the velo here. High toss. Beautiful serve. Zadana trying to time it. He's smothered, blanketed by a triple block. Kurt Neuster was in the thick of things. And we're tied. Watch for Emmanuel to call a quick timeout. They don't get a side out here pretty soon. Look at the height on this toss by Sakonoko. It's Yuval like. He chose Blackman's on that serve. Wow. He is that, gets, that gets the crowd going. Oh, man. He is something special. Athletics.com. 18 serving 17. Crowd still buzzing from that last heater from Sakonoko from the service line. Here's Neuster. Took a little something off on that swing to put it in the perfect spot, and Hawaii has now assumed control here up two. I love the way Tread Rosenthal's really working the middle now as much as he possibly can. Neuster with four kills, hitting 250, but all eyes on Luis Sakonoko. an hour at least you could barely see that one two aces wow 
He's worth the price of admission right there just to watch him serve. Does it again. Great pass, though. Emmanuel out of system, and Hawaii will have an opportunity. Outside, Hawkes bounces it off of the hands, played on the Emmanuel side. Angelier bumps it back row. It's Feeney. Sakamoto, the layout save off the scoreboard. The bounce at Hawkes. Hawaii on a 6 0 scoring run. And it has completely changed the vibe here in set two. Decide to take something off that time. Hawaii on the attack. It's Neustor. The kick save by Sakanoko. But they're going to call it a fourth contact, saying that Neustor's hit did not get over the tape. But even in a play that didn't go Hawaii's way, uh, he still finds a way to excite the crowd, Louis Sakanoko. <laughs> Choi, the overpass put down by Feeney and gives Adonic credit for the serve and Emmanuel not ready to pack it in here in the second. That was a really good serve by Eli Zadonic. Just ripping it right down the right down the middle at Choi. A tough serve to pass. And he pumps it long. Zadonic, one of the guys that James Friddle says can serve with some extra pepper, some extra pace. Tried to do it a little bit there, but didn't quite have the spin on it. So now we're going to have a service sub here for Hawaii as Kai Taylor comes in. And he will serve in place of Neuster or Hawaii up three, 22 serving 19. I wonder if Kai Taylor, how does he serve with all those bandages on his <laughs> serving arm? And the block is up there on the swing by Feeney, played over the net. D set. Alakai Todd explodes on it. That was a kaboom. Todd is a little inconsistent that, that first set. He's starting to becoming taking smarter shots right now and aiming for the back one third of the court. Always a good place to aim if you're a D ball hitter. That's his first kill of the match. And the block is up. Turning it to sender there as Adonic tried to lay into it from behind the line, and it is a Loha ball for Hawaii in set two. A very competitive second set. But it turned when Louis Sakonoko started to throw laser beams from the service line. And the push there by Nieves does not get past the net. And that's how set two comes to a close. So the Hawaii volleyball fan base was able to meet Louis Sakonoko for the first time in this second set. He did not disappoint. Spiros is settling in comfortably here to maybe ride the rest of the evening out. Clearly, Hawaii has really strong, four really strong pin hitters to be sure. So set three underway. Hawaii up two sets to none. The block is up on Feeney. Does not go down, though. Feeney a second time. Gets it by the double block. And a fairly formidable block at that. You have Voss at 6-7 and Ozan Oz at 6-8. And Feeney was able to avoid both of them. Oh, good. Goes for the big hole in the block. And he's got the great celebration as well. He does the Aiden. We'll just call it the Aiden. I yeah, the Aiden, yeah. There's Voss doing G Voss things. Been a minute since he committed an error. That 11 kills, error free, hit 846 on night two, Amazing. despite the loss against Loyola Chicago. And so far in this one, five kills, six attempts, no errors. He's hitting 833. <laughs> you know what else I admire about G Voss? Oh boy, that toss oh, way that off toss. the mark for Sakanoko. Nice adjustment. Still got it over, and then the tip shot dug up by Voss. Backside, here's Ols first swing, pops it out of bounds. <laughs> well, that was calamitous from the beginning. I was going to say, another thing I like about G. Voss, civil engineering major. 
really a tough one. And he has just studied his way through his UH career and been good on and off the court. Diving pass there by Sakamoko was a good one. Here's Finn ripping into that set. When you look at Finn and how tall he is, what is he? He's 5'11", maybe? Listed at six feet, could be a tad bit charitable. I don't think it'd be charitable. I think it's charitable because, but you know what? He plays like he's six five or six six. He's worked so hard to get his body in great shape and to become a good leaper. That one punched in the air by Sakanoko may have been an out ball. Rosenthal ran out of room. Yeah, he, Sakanoko actually asked the nurse, "Did you touch it?" That's why. I that's why I uh, made a play on. Huh? Three serving two and Noah Langelier will serve. Pass by Sakanoko. It's an overpass. Two hand save there by Fim on the Zadonic swing. And then Sakanoko, look out. I mean, if you're a fan and you paid top dollar for the courtside seats, <laughs> you best be paying attention when Mr. Sokonoko is about to approach. Hackenberg did a nice job of getting out of the way of that one. Finn goes off the high hands. Softball swing there by Nieves. The up by Sokonoko. High and away. Set goes to Finn. A little joust up there. Covered by Choi. Here's Neusterer. Blocked. And it is called out. So a point for Hawaii, but the Lions team as a whole went running over to their head coach James Friddle to beg for him to challenge that one. From this perspective in real time, even from where we're sitting across the court, it did look like it went off the block and in. Mm. You don't think that caught the line there? I think it did. Yeah, I would agree with you. Now, if they just freeze that frame, <laughs> show it to Mark Nakashima. Now remember, uh, things a little bit different here this season in this building with regard to the replay challenges. In the past, when the R2 was on the same side as us, um, we would sort of work in unison where the official would be able to talk with our producer in the production truck and they could request certain angles and they could kind of talk it through it just as far as what angles were available. Uh, now there's no longer that communication. They also have the DV Sport replay system that can be utilized by Mark Nakashima here, uh, as well as some of the angles that are provided by Spectrum Sports. But again, that dialogue, that communication uh, is no longer there. So it is basically all on Mark Nakashima to scroll through all of these shots. seems to be the shot that probably yeah, best explains or yeah. shows what could have happened. Is it up. enough evidence to overturn the call is the question, but it looks like it's touching the line. It sure does. Easy call. Okay, Mark. <laughs> Head set off. Let's play. Come on. <laughs> All right, well. All right, Mark, wait and listen. <laughs> He's very coachable, isn't he? He's a good referee. After review, calls over time. So a good challenge there by James Friddle. Yeah, he had like three players were gonna come over and tackle Friddle <laughs> to get his challenge card. If he didn't take it out, he was gonna get laid out. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a program that just really enjoys one another, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, you know what else, Mark? Come on. You gotta love the way that they come from such diverse backgrounds. Guys who have never played volleyball, never played high school volleyball, learned how to play on the grass. You know, it's pretty, very amazing kind of program that he's built. 
Yeah, he says it's a pretty disproportionate amount of the roster are guys who have never played organized indoor volleyball before. Yeah. Punch saved there by Choi. So free chance here for the Lions. It's Eichenberger taking on the set. And it goes out off the palm of Nieves. Nieves looks much more comfortable on the right side as a lefty than he does on the left side, which is normal. So here is Ozan Oz. What a serve that was. Nieves threw the block. And again, some instances here in this third frame where that Hawaii block has not fully formed. You can almost call it porous. <laughs> so six serving four here. Pass there by Finn. He gets the set on the out. Now, this is the guy who plays like he's 6'6", six, six, not six feet. Look at that. He's got his own celebrations, doesn't he? He could be in one of the Marvel comics, don't you think? Yeah, that's well, a good, like one of the X-Men. Yeah, exactly. Nieves, that hit the pin, it appeared. And so that's going to be a point for Hawaii, and we're tied. At six. Yeah, the thing about Keone Thim, you get the impression that he's just always running at like level nine yeah. on the dial, yeah. right? Yeah. I got the feeling too that Keone and, and Louie have serving contests. <laughs> like that. Well, Keone may have won that round. That's an ace. And that was some pop, some extra chili pepper water on that serve. Ricky watched what Louie did in the second set. He says, okay, watch me. I'm coming back for the third set, and I'm going to rip it. Well, competition is good, right? Three aces tonight. I wish the radar was out tonight, but I'm telling you, all of those swings were, were at least 75. Seven, I'm sorry, 70. And hit into the net by Michael. And so Hawaii now on a 6-1 run. Yeah, I, I do like the idea of Thim and Sakonoko just seeing who can outdo the other from the service line. Once again, people in the front row. That was a touch them all, yes. That was, yeah. A touch them all. I was, I was waiting for the, the catchphrase, the C-Mac catchphrase, yeah. touch them all. Well, your dad taught me that. <laughs> but the people in, the fr in those yeah. real fancy VIP seats, they're in danger with <laughs> this UH team. Oh, and losing the joust that time was Rosenthal, and Aiden Feeney did the too small gesture and then stomped it out. That was uh, yeah. quite the elaborate, uh, elaborate and choreographed celebration. Check it out. So he does the too small there, and then watch him sort of stomp on it. I mean, okay. Bim. Swooping in, didn't get all of it, but got enough of it. And Hawaii back in front. Now this is one exciting team to watch. If you don't have season tickets, go out and get them. Yeah. If you're not going to get them, at least come out to a, the, and watch these team, this team play, because they are really, really fun to watch. Exciting. Physical. The back row. This is Zadonic. And he hits it out, no touch. So Hawaii up two. Yeah, and you get the impression this is a team that is still figuring certain things out. You have a 17-year-old freshman setter. You have some moving parts at the pin hitting positions. And so what this team will look like a month, two months, three months from now could be completely different. Yep. Here's Feeney through the block. Outside, Sakonoko. That was just sheer power. You know, if I was a blocker, I'd walk away from that. I had touched this. He's got to walk away feeling, oh, God, my hand's got to be hurt. 
just he just unloads man what a powerful powerful swing I mean, when you first walked into the practice gym prior to the Loyola matches you had Sakonoko whose hair was grown out you can kind of see it in some of our graphics of his headshot as Neuster is able to dot it in that corner for an ace and Emmanuel's going to signal for a timeout well, we'll get back to the uh, hair story of Louis Sakonoko when we come back. Uh, the reason he gave us, well, back home, I could afford to do it because it takes a lot of work and you got to you know, hire somebody to, to do the braids and do all that stuff as Neustauer goes back to back on the service aces. He said, but over here, it's a little uh, too expensive. So I had to, I had to out of <laughs> financial uh, requirement, uh, I, had to, uh, I had to cut it down. Maybe he's an econ major. <laughs> Who knows? Smart move. You can just see in some of his serves and even that last swing he got out on the pin, uh, just the power with which he displays. 13, serving eight. Backside, this is Nieves. And again, able to drive it through that Hawaii block. Picks up his second kill, late closing block there, and he took advantage of it. Emmanuel actually out blocking Hawaii here in this match, six to five. Lost in the middle. Good read that time by Botis. Now Sakanoko. Off the block, the cover there by Feeney. And then from behind the line, Nieves is dug up. Here's Fim flying in. Yoni Fim grooving right now. He's got six kills, no errors. He's hitting up around 600. You know, he's got all the shots now. He's, he's taking smart shots. He's not just hitting hard every time. He's sitting in the right places. He was able to cut that one to that deep corner. 14 serving nine. Here's Rosenthal. It's another ace. 11 service aces for the Rainbow Warriors. And they get to 15 first here in the third. It's 30 p.m. Substitution here for the Lions. Harrison Coelho. 6-1 senior from Coconut Creek, Florida. Out there on the floor here as James Friddle trying to find a spark for his team. What with 11 service aces. And the overpass is forced. Backside, Bulls dug up over the net. And Voss says Mahalo Nui Lo. You know, one thing about Kieran Voss, he just does not make many mistakes. Here's an overpass that he could have followed through into the cable, but oh no, he pulls his arm back and makes sure that he does not make a net violation. Just such a smart, smart player. 16 serving nine, and Rosenthal sends it out. So most aces in a match for Hawaii since, well, their last match. The five-setter against Loyola Chicago, they had 11 aces, but that was over five sets, and they also had the 27 service errors. Different story tonight, 11 aces to eight errors. And that one is served long by Coelho. And here is now Louis Sakonoko to serve. Okay, put your seatbelt on here. Maybe, Come get on. A, maybe get a helmet. Just get the case. helmets for the entire Emmanuel passing team right now. And the first row of the VIP section. Oh, just grazed the netting. And then the clock is up. And the roof is down how for about, Eli Zadonic swing. How about Zadonic passing that? He took it perfectly. Rare air. He passes Savan Leone for 10th place on the career block assist list at UH. And Louis Sakonoko obliges out of the timeout with another lightning bolt. And back to that blocking package. You know, I think if Charlie Wade goes back and looks at the film from tonight, I don't think he'll be very happy with the block. There have been too many split blocks, too many late forming blocks, and 
I think he'll uh, make it a point of emphasis for next week's practices. Oh, that one goes long. A couple of the people down on the floor seeing their lives pass before them. And the drummer, the drummer and the tuba as well. Yeah, the bands, <laughs> the bands got to be a little bit uh, weary as well. There you go. They're, they're pretty <laughs> they're liking that. 11 serving 19. Here's Thim. Oh, he went up the elevator shaft a couple extra floors. It'll be played back, though, but the back bump set goes over the net. Holes couldn't get it down, and then it's punched over. Free chance here for Hawaii. Backside, Holes. Another dig there. That time it was Coelho from off the net. Zidonic dug up. Backside, Holes again. Can't get it to the floor. Zidonic blocked and moved. Finally, Hawaii does. And it's Holes on the defensive side, jumping up next to G. Voss. That was a well form block. Knows yet to get his first kill, but certainly Rosenthal's giving him plenty of chances. He's taking some good swings, but it's been some pretty good defense played by Emmanuel. Besides Adonic off the block and out. So going with 12 service aces in this match to nine service errors. They're only hitting 197 overall for the match. Emmanuel continues to toil in negative numbers at the moment. How would you evaluate not, this yeah. Hawaii performance to this point here? Yeah, the offense. Well, they're going to call that in cross court. The thin slice of bread there by Thim. That might be a challenge here. The offense, as, you, as you're asking, Kanoa, has not been sharp. And generally, the offense takes longer to form and get me the uh, chickens before they hatch a little oh, bit there. See, man. man. Oh. Nieves blocked and moved. Neusterer jumping up next to Rosenthal. And that is a big block right there for Hawaii. Between six, those nine, two. Six, eight. That's, yeah. yeah, it is. And maybe that 6-8 closer to 6-9. Yeah. And the 6-9 closer to 6-10. <laughs> 22 serving 12. And that one goes on. Talk about Neusterer. We haven't seen him break out his chessboard yet. Remember last year? That was so much fun to watch he, he and uh, Jakob Teller as part of their warm-up. They'd break out the chessboard right here in the arena yeah. in front of us. Yeah, that was pretty great. Here's Thim. That was a big wind up there. Sakanoko back set to Thim off of one leg, dumps it down. Now, Thim having quite the offensive night. How about this? Eight kills, no errors, hit no. 571 with three service aces. And now serving. <laughs> that was a wicked serve. What a pass, though. Nieves dug up by Finn. Rosenthal high and away. Saka no goal. Laying the lumber. We're seeing flashes of the future here, C Mac. Aloha ball for Hawaii. They rise here in the arena, but. Uh, Things will be paused for a moment because we're going to have a challenge from James Friddle. So the announced attendance, 3,498 through the turnstiles. Some of them still standing, but many of them decided, oh, well, we're going to be here for a few more minutes. We'll, we'll go ahead and sit back down. I'm still wondering why, how, let's see if we'll watch this replay here. Oh, dear. It's out. Yeah, call on the floor in. That does seem to uh, call that into question. You see green between the ball and the line. A little tougher to tell there from that angle. The other angle is definitely out. Now, some people have been asking me, Kanoa, maybe you know the answer to this. Why did a Hawaii men's volleyball get Wednesday, Fridays, and the other well, Thursday, Saturdays, for basketball. The more, yeah, the more lucrative nights. 
You tell the people. All right, so it is an overturn call that time, and a fast review there by Mark Nagashima. Yeah. He must be double parked. As, as far as the schedule is, is concerned, uh, that's probably something you'd need to take up with the Big West Conference. Yeah. Um, you know, basketball being one of the driving sports right. in the Big West. I guess later on, Hawaii will get more favorable nights once the basketball show. Sure. That one put over by Rosenthal. And so now it will once again be Aloha Ball. Of course, here in the islands, uh, there's no denying the power and the popularity of men's volleyball. And we just hope to see that continue to catch on, not only elsewhere in the conference, but elsewhere in the country as well. They're on their feet. Neusterer for the match. Nieves loops it over, the pass by Thim. Back row, Thim! Crushes it long! And it remains Aloha Ball after the point goes to the Lions. And that looked way in. That looked well in from that angle. <laughs> and the crowd reacting now to the replay overhead. And Charlie Wade may be waiting too long to challenge. And so we play on. Thim, that one goes long. Oh, you knew he was looking to just blow that ball up. Let's see who's going to get the set this time. I think the set's going to go to G. Voss on a good pass. Going to go to Luis Sakanoko on, the, on a, maybe a bad pass. Those were the first two hitting errors for Keone Finn, and the irony that first one shouldn't have been. An anticlimactic close to set three. But Hawaii takes it 25-16, and they win it. Ekahi Elua. Aloha here in the third match of the year to improve to 2-1. 25-10, 19.